Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Dumela Bakhaitu, uh, welcome to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. I have on the studio someone who's going to talk about business, how it operates, the spa business, running a boutique, and all the rest of it. As always, we bring dynamic uh, entrepreneurs uh, who are being impactful in our ecosystem. And if we're going to continue with this work, please, we need your support and show your support by subscribing. I noticed that 70% uh, of my viewers don't subscribe, so please <laughs> uh, remove yourself from that 70% and hit that subscribe button, please. Uh, welcome to the studio, Mary Harekwe. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Would you start off our conversation by telling the viewers who you are and sharing a little bit about your background? Okay. Um, my name is Lebran Lame Harekwe. Um, very young lady, still in my early 30s. Um, my background is I did my first degree, BA Honours in Broadcasting and Journalism, and I'm still currently pursuing my Master's in Project Management, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what training do you, did you get for your current businesses? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a funny one. Mm. Um, Okay, my background is before this, I used to be a producer because of my, my, my school background. Um, and that is what I really, that was my passion. Um, then because of uh, sickness, I fell ill. I got fired from my previous job, mm. which is sad. Mm. But it actually led me to where I am today because then I opened my own company, uh, my own media company uh, called Z Promotions. And um, I did a few jobs for, well, my biggest client at the time was Botswana Prison Service. I did the 59th anniversary and 60th anniversary, did um, invitation cards for them, programs and all sorts. Um, but then also then fell ill. And then we sat back uh, with my mom, just sitting around talking of what can we do with our homes? Because yeah. we wanted to... No renting out places mm -hmm. in, in this day and era. Hey, tenants are a problem. So we wanted to start a business where, let's say, a guest house. Because we knew that's where, that's where we could get more rent venue without expecting having to bank on your hale. So that's where the first idea of opening a guest house started. Mm -hmm. So... And, and, and the idea behind it, we wanted to, 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 to call it something unique. Uh, hence why the Orcus Rosia came in. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, I'm going to ask you to park right there and explain <laughs> what is Orchid's Rosia. <laughs> Orchid's Rosia basically is Orchid Rose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my mom is someone who loves flowers. So mm -hmm. she wanted a mix of your orchid and your rose. So then we wanted to find a fancier way of saying it instead of just... Uh, putting it in Sokho. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Hence why the Orchis Rosia Holdings as yes. the mother company because there were other ideas that we still had jotted down that we wanted to put under. But the guest house was the first one that we actually opened under uh, Orchis Rosia being Orchid Luxury Boutique Guest mm -hmm. House. Yes. Orchid Luxury Boutique Guest House. Yes. Oh, I've said it. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and just tell me um, first... Um, do you, do you mind sharing on this illness which has uh, plagued you a little bit? What happened? It's, it's, it's a whole lot of things, actually. Um, from being severely anemic, dealing with migraines, swelling of legs. It's just a whole 
plethora mm. of, of I still deal with it now. Mm-hmm. It's just a way of trying to overcome and persevere mm-hmm. with the illnesses and just moving on, okay. not letting them hinder me from working. And I guess after I had a minor stroke back in 2018, oh. because of the stress of my business, um, my mom asked me to come and help her with the project. And I think that's what really kept me afloat because I think working for somebody else wouldn't really understand what I was going through physically. Mm -hmm. Um, And just having to step back and also think to myself, what is this? What is happening? And where am I going? What's my future plan? And what do you have in store for me? I, th- I guess for me, that, that, w- that was my biggest. And my mom was very concerned with my mm. mental health as well because I fell into a very deep depression. Um, but because of my background with Jorge Jodisto Yangola being... In church, and, for In instance. church, exactly. As a songstress. <laughs> We're going to talk about you know, yeah, the part of you being a songstress. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about yes, that later. Yes, we'll talk about it. Um, but it, 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 it really got me... thinking, okay, I'm getting into this new sector that I have no background in mm. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But because of the way and how we were trained hospitality to me comes natural. natural. Mm. So for me, I treat my clients like I would treat my family members. Mm-hmm. Because I think that the, the motto that we, we want to put across to all our clients is we want them to feel wanted at home and just feel welcome mm. yeah and and you keep mentioning your mom a lot uh, is it right to think of her as a mentor yes and, very much and and what more can you tell us about her as a mentor she's she's one of the most amazing women i have ever met not just because she's my mom mm. but in terms of how she does her things and how she thinks her mind is very i think it's one of the most intriguing minds I've ever come across Mm. Um, and I know a lot of people who've come across or met her Mm. know that you're talking about a judge of the court of appeal (laughs) the justice the justice of the court of appeal appeal of the republic of (laughs) Botswana (laughs) yes Yes. Uh, so a lot of people justice Harek yes yes a lot of people sometimes they feel like she's very scary because of the job that she does but Mm. Mm. Um, but she's very inspiring in the fact that with what she does, she likes motivating, especially young women. And that's where she came in, in trying to allow me to grow with this business and saying, Wanaka, here's a business, run with it. And she left it in my capable hands. Sometimes I feel it's, it's a bit too much, mm. but... I've, I've actually come to grow a thick skin because mm. of her believing in me so much. Okay. Yes. Now, let's talk about the mother company and how the idea developed. Of course, you mentioned your challenges with the illness. Yeah. Um, now, the, 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 I just, I'm talking about structure here. Yes. yes. How that came about for you to have a structure where you have a mother company and then have subsidiaries. Yes. Mm. Well, um, like I said, at first, the first idea that came up was, okay, let's start with the house that we stayed in. I grew up in it. I think we moved into the house 2005 when I was in Form 2 at the time. Mm. Still Mm. a baby. Mm. So when we moved to Lobadze, um, Mm. she had rented out the house. Mm. But obviously, like I'm saying, tenants... She moved there because she was a judge there. She was a judge in Lobadze. But now... We thought, okay, she's, she's very good with interior design because she actually did the interior of the place. Mm-hmm. So she has a very good eye for unique and nice things. And sometimes I wish I had a teensy bit of that. Uh, from, uh, a I'm lot sure of you people. picked it up. I did. Mm-hmm. I did. I think mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. Um, every day is a learning curve. So... Mm-hmm. Um, so what she wanted to bring in was, because she loves nice things, our idea was, okay, let's make a guest house, but let's make a different type of brand of guest house. 
because you know your guest houses give your 250 low cost you know mm. um but we wanted to bring something bigger and something more exquisite and luxurious hence why the name orchid luxury boutique guest house because but how about one boutique they think it's a, a shop mm. yeah but boutique actually means exclusive so we wanted to bring exclusivity to the the the, the b and b scene um and when you rate how we look we're in between hotel lodge mm -hmm. but at a small scale so that's how we stand apart that's our best selling part of it is because mm. we're trying to unique bring, selling proposition yeah, exactly. yeah we try to bring a homey feeling but with the luxurious feeling as well and just combine them together describe one of your rooms i want to just imagine the luxury <laughs> i wish you had brought pictures <laughs> i will share them with you yeah actually so what we wanted to do uh was bring the outside in that was the idea of it so we have five rooms the guest house has five rooms um and all our rooms are named after different species of orchids um so the first two small rooms our standard rooms are blue the colors is blue representing water so the carpet and the wall is blue um and then the next room which is our luxury room uh luxury suite it's gray uh and it's represents gray stones so the way they are the first room is blue then the one the next one is gray is water flowing through gray stones mm -hmm. and then the next room is also blue uh which is called begonia so it's azalea mm -hmm. gardenia begonia begonia is also blue it represents the sky mm -hmm. then the, the next room is cecilia it's more your all these are types tones. of orchids all types mm. of orchids mm. um it's more on your yellow tones so your tip of the grass blades or your sunsets mm. um and then the executive room is catalea i don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever watched the movie colombiana mm, not that i recall <laughs> but yes. i'm sure some viewers some have some viewers have so they always actually pick it pick that out every time they get into the executive room that oh the name catalea mm. from that movie mm -hmm. um so it has different um uh, types of box or wood even the tile feeling mm -hmm. is woody mm -hmm. so it represents your tree box mm -hmm. and then throughout the room that the house the the color is more brown representing soil mm -hmm. so that's how we we managed to bring in mm -hmm. the rooms or tie in the rooms together mm -hmm. and then outside is your palm trees your pool the mm -hmm. big garden in in the outside mm -hmm. it's very beautiful you okay. should actually pass by <laughs> and and do you have a marketing strategy for it um we're still trying to but our main one what, what we're using right now is booking.com mm -hmm. um and our greatest or our largest target market was clients from outside because majority when we started we opened in 2018 um and our largest clientele was clients from outside obviously mm. uh, but so ana ne ba sense ba le ka go tlhaloganya gore okay a bnb room standard room 1000 we don't understand mm. and every single time they would say that i'll say please come have a look and every time they'll sit in they'll be like okay no now we understand because mm. of the everything that is inside mm. the furniture uh the feel and just the ambiance of the place it mm -hmm. it transposes you to some a, a different place whatsoever because people always say it feels like we're not in khaburun it feels like what it uh, feels like we're outside the country yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay um w w were you um fashioning it after a particular place had you uh, maybe gone overseas and experienced something which you wanted to replicate here I sadly haven't traveled that much but my mom has. Mm. So she's the one who's really her her main idea was trying to bring your I want to go to Cape Town. Mm. Let's bring Cape Town to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, within the place okay. Mogotswana basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now tell us about the other uh sister businesses. Yes. Um okay, like I said Orchid Luxury Boutique Guest House opened in 2018. Um then we know what happened 2020 covid hit mm -hmm. uh 
and it really hit us because mm. we we're still trying to sprout our I'm in head. that I'm in that space so I can relate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we tried we had to, to actually we have three lodges, we mm. had to close one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really tough. So I remember July twenty twenty we actually almost shut down because it was very bad. Imagine you're still trying to guess how didn't see mobile so the market is is huge mm. and especially in block eight because that's where we're located mm. there are so many within the vicinity mm -hmm. of where we are mm. so we're still trying to baby steps crawling mm. or and then mm. covid <laughs> is closing us down and we were saved by the quarantine uh things because we had to fill in to 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 open up the guest house as a quarantine site yeah, you, you're very smart. I'll tell you why I think you're smart. Yes. Me, I thought the other way around. I was given that opportunity. Yes. I rejected it thinking that, oh, the place now will be painted as a place of COVID yeah. <laughs> and people will never come thinking yes. there's COVID. Yeah. yeah. Now you've just, you know, confirmed what I've, <laughs> I've now accepted was an act of stupidity at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So that really actually helped us stay afloat. Mm -hmm. um, but then while we were still during, during that time, I was trying to figure out a way of bringing other re re revenue uh, to the place. And I thought, okay, I love baking. Let me reignite my passion mm. for baking. Mm. Hence where the Orchid Bakes came into play. I was like... Where did you get the bravery? You didn't think that, um, you know, COVID patients are going to infect you with COVID and your 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 your, your and staff. my staff. Mm. We, we had that fear, but... At the end of the day, I said, God, I put everything in your hands. Mm. Yes. That, that's my biggest... So um, what precautions most. did you take? Everything that we did, we spoke to the Ministry of Health to help us out with the gears mm -hmm. so the, and testing. So every single time after the clients would leave, we would make sure that our staff are tested and... We, all the, all the precautions. That Would you have to disinfect? We had to disinfect, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, obviously, we had to go maybe a week without clients. But then, obviously, because a lot of patients were coming, were coming in. Um, but we, every single precaution that was asked of us, mm -hmm. sanitizing, making sure that we wash our hands, making sure that our clients are also safe and feel... There's that stigma where mm. people will think, yo, Mototanuke COVID, what are we going to do? Mm. We wanted them to feel like, okay, you're not with your family, but now we're your family. Mm. That's why we're here to help you out as mm. well. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are extended out. Yes. Yeah. And how did you get paid? How was the system working? Hey, it was tough <laughs> because you're my, 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 my 500 and but I had to But I had to say to them, look, we are putting ourselves at risk. So you need to also meet us halfway. So we had to sit down and agree. Or, mm. Okay, this is what we're going to do. And meet me halfway in terms of monetary. Mm. Yeah. You're, you're negotiating we with government. Negotiate. Yes. So we, you reached a halfway point. Yes, we reached a halfway point because ah, mm. the business needed to grow as mm. well. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, all right. Still, I want to know the other businesses. Yes. Mm. Um, Orchid Bakes. So mm. Orchid Bakes started during mm -hmm. the, the, the lockdowns. Mm. And the first people who actually started to, to, to taste the bakes were the clients. The COVID clients. The COVID clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, 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 they I, I guess, had the, the fair share of the beginning of mm. Orchid Bakes. Mm. Um, and then I thought, okay, Instead of just keeping it with in-house, mm. let us also service other people because whether there's lockdown or whatever, but to buy a ten, who did birthday, their mm. anniversaries, so people still want those mm -hmm. to be taken care of. Taken care mm. of. Mm. So that's when we started Orchid Bakes, which was 2020. But I think what, what we does it, what, in what does it actually offer? We make cakes, cupcakes, cookies as well yeah mm -hmm. Maybe, well, that's our main product is it a, is it an involved process is it complex it's it's complex but um 
I'm a general manager, but I'm very hands-on. Mm. Um, in terms of the guest house, my chef, I lost my chef 2020. She went back to school. Okay. So I ended up taking uh, part in cooking breakfast for our clients, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll cook breakfast, and then they'll have an order. I bake. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who bakes mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll bake after that, go deliver, and then come back and get on with the uh, duties of the guest house, having mm -hmm. to meet with clients mm -hmm. or push the, the, the So the So brand. there's a mini bakery within the guest house? Yes, within the bakery. Yeah, within, within. the guest house. Okay. So the Orchid Kitchen, Orchid Luxury Boutique mm -hmm. Kitchen is ultimately Orchid Bakes Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think your message is that you can basically set your business anywhere. Anyway. Because some of the biggest businesses in the world started in, exactly. in a garage. Exactly. We all start small. We mm. all start small. I like, I like yes. that message. Yes. I like that message. So how big is the Orchid Bakes now and, and what are your customers? Um, we're, still, we're still trying to push because now my, 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 my attention went to the new baby which we just opened two months ago, which is Orchid Luxury Spa. Mm -hmm. So, Ogara Orchid Bakes, two seconds. You cannot find somebody to run it full time for you? I'm still trying to figure out that. Um, Maybe one of the them. viewers might be interested. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. if anybody wants to, uh, you know, bake mm. with me, mm. contact me, it's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so going back again to, yes. to, to the newest baby, what is it and how does it operate? Orchid Luxury Spa. Mm. So, a lot of the time I sit with my clients at the guest house and we talk. I've, I've had so much conversations with different people who've come in for different businesses mm. and mm. it's really opened up my mind to... to listen to what our clients want mm. so you literally hear somebody come in maybe if they're coming in for a week mm. and they're in for business and they'll be like Ish, do you know of any spa anywhere nearby that we can you know and a thought came to my mind wouldn't it be great for us to have a spa that works hand in hand with the guest house where even if it's in, in, the, in a different location because of space at the, the guest house, we would be able to shuttle our clients between the two places. Mm. Um, if they can't come, would actually take one of the girls at the spa to go to the guest house and set up in the room and have them relax. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's how it started. That's how really. It, yeah. it really started So, out. so you... you um, you avail the business or the opportunity to your customers. Yes. To your, to your to, guest yes. house customers. Yes. Okay. Now, what's your inspiration? Um, we've heard about the mentorship from your mom, but what, what does it drive? What, what is your inspiration uh, that keeps you going? I'm asking about the mental fuel, as yes. it were, that keeps you running. I think for me... I, uh, every single time someone asks me what pushes you and my greatest answer is passion and love for people. I think that's, that, that's what pushes me mm -hmm. to, to do everything that I can. Even if the money is not coming in right now, I know one day it will, mm. but as long as my clients are happy, I will extend myself beyond so that my clients have a good experience. And every single time is, if it was me on the opposite end, how would I want to be treated? Mm -hmm. So that's how, even with my, 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 my employees, that's what the drive I give them. I said, every single service that you're going to cater for a client, put yourself in their shoes. Or if you are on the opposite end, what kind of service would you like to mm -hmm. get? So that's, that, well, that's what pushes me mainly. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, nalebu. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's an important point because yeah. I think it's Mahatma Gandhi who said that, um, you know, customers are not an interruption yes. 
to your business, mm. they are the reason for its existence. Yes. So sometimes we tell them how busy we are. Yeah. 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 So when we should really be attending to yeah. them. And, and, and I think the message is that you should never be too busy for, for your, your customers. Clients. Exactly. Mm. I, can have, I can sit down and have tea with my clients in the dining room at, at the guest house, and they're just asking me questions about the, 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 the guest house, the inspiration. Actually, one guy once asked me, how come at a very young age, how come at a very young age you're able to mm. oversee mm -hmm. people who are also older than you? Because I think everybody else at the guest house, who's my, my employees, are older than me. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, the one thing that you will push you or take you to a greater height is treating somebody the way you'd want to be treated. Mm. Like I said, mm. I, that's how we were raised. Mm -hmm. um, so treat somebody the way you want to be treated. Okay. Yes. All right. Have you ever had the moral dilemma of dealing with the aspect of keeping the guest house running uh, even though you're an Adventist on Sabbath? Has that, has that ever been uh, an issue and how did you address it? It is. <laughs> um, my question that I always ask my fellow Adventists mm. is, okay, I'm here providing a service, ya mm -hmm. A fellow Adventist, you're going to book at, let's say, Grand Palm, for example. When you are visiting when you are visiting Haboroni from somewhere from else. From somewhere else. You go to church, you expect your room to be cleaned, you have expect food. I think I take my, my, my business just like a doctor. Mm -hmm. It's quite important. Mm -hmm. So and my place is open on Sabbath mm -hmm. for my clients. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna shut it down just because I'm going to church. I'll be at church. Mm. My, my people will be there helping out. Yeah. yeah. But a fundamentalist will say, doesn't the Bible explicitly say not even your servant should be operating? Yes, it does. And how but do you deal with that? Hey, like I'm saying, mm. I take it like mm. I'm a dog. You're, you're offering a necessary service. A necessary so you are more service. or less like the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan, exactly. Mm. Yes. And it's, it's a case of it's more more thing. It's uh, the, you have to do something. Yes. But the question is: Is it going to fall in the mud every single week? Not every single week. Mm. I've actually come to a point where, if by Friday we haven't had any bookings, mm -hmm. I actually shut down the place. Oh, okay. Yes. But if by Thursday, because people babukela mm -hmm. people have already booked. I can't tell them. Okay, no, you can't come to. Yeah. Your place because we won't be around. It's always help. a challenge for yes. Adventist business persons because yes. I'm one of them. Yeah. How to maneuver. Yes. But uh, what I've noticed is that our church is fairly enlightened. Yeah. Because they can bless your business. Yes. They can pray at your business. Yeah. And they don't really oh, push the issue. Yes. Just one or two individuals here that and there. Will, yeah. But ultimately, is it not between you and, and God. God? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yes. Now, did, I don't know whether you explained the unique selling proposition for other businesses. I think you explained it for the lodge. I want to know what's so unique about the bakes business and what's so unique about the spa. I think it, it, it culminates. It, it goes through right through mm. from the guest house to the spa to Orchid Bakes. My greatest selling point is love. Mm -hmm. love at its utmost best um, and also bringing luxury to the different businesses that were, were I know definitely there are many spas already there are many guest houses already and like you're saying what sets, what sets us apart mm. and my driving point on it Lorado, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. within, because we also we also put that or instill it in our, our our employees as well. The one thing that drives me is prayer. Mm -hmm. Throughout every morning before I start at the guest house, 
I call all my employees, we have a prayer. And I said to them, it's mandatory. It's mandatory. And I, I actually said you to them. You mean you get fired if you don't pray? No. <laughs> no, no I see. No, okay. <laughs> no. I said to them, because there was a difference when, no, before we kidding. prayed mm. and after we prayed. Mm -hmm. We started getting more clients when we started praying. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, do you see a difference mm. in when we didn't pray and when we put God into to Is it? Yes. So for me, that's, that's the greatest thing, prayer. So what advice would you give other start startups and other businesses in regard to that particular point? Prayer is key to everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Your relationship with God is not based on what another person's relation, how their relationship with God is. But that driving force, that passion, that is the one that is true that should help you in everything passion passion able mm. talk because that's the one thing that will push you even if the business is not yet doing very well you know that so you specifically pray for more customers you specifically pray yes. for more money you specifically pray yes. for success i i pray even for the health of my employees mm. and the health of my clients mm -hmm. as well Okay. Yes. Do you actually now go into scripture and try to encourage them from scripture? Yes, I do actually. Mm. Yes. It also helps me. It motivates me. Sometimes it, it gets really tough. Um, where you, 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 you notice that, okay, Humbe and Ogata business is very low. What am I going to do? Because bills have to be paid. But um, and and someone there's will not say, enough in the bank. And, and someone is going to say, but tapelo ha ka ka go thusa gore madi a o ketsega mo bank account mm. and like i say passion passion and how would you respond to such a person that's that's where the passion comes in for mm. me mm -hmm. um you may think prayer just praying is not going to help one way or another we've been struggling for the past few months and i pray a lot and somehow somehow some way by the end of the month, mm. I'm able to pay my employees. I'm able to pay to pay overheads mm. and all that. And it's always okay. What next? Apart from the marketing mm. and interacting I've with people, I've always wondered about that because yeah. you'd have on the 29th nothing, absolutely nothing yes. in the bank. Mm. Uh, you pray or you engage. You do the usual thing, yeah. and all of a sudden on the 30th, there's money you're able to pay everybody. <laughs> I've always wondered how that happens because it has happened to me over the <laughs> over the decades. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And up to this day, Total. you know, you are most certain that no, 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 people are going to get paid. Yeah. Bills are going to get paid, yeah. even though it doesn't look, like, look it like it at yes. the time. Yeah. It's 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 almost like a miracle, isn't it? Yes. Mm. And uh, let's talk about your growth plans. Um, are we going to see more of these spas? Are you seeing, going to see more of these guest houses? Are we going to see more of these, uh, you know, uh, bakeries? We're actually thinking big. Hmm. Um, if I can, if you bite your tongue too quickly, you, you're going to set yourself back. But hmm. um, we're thinking of building a brand. Uh, ultimately, your probably Orchid Luxury Lodge. Orchid Luxury Hotel, Orchid Tours, mm. maybe one day, Orchid Airways, who knows? Mm. I'm thinking big. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking really big. I'm creating a legacy not just for myself, but for the future generations and our family as well. Mm. Yeah. But if I push you to say, can you define the next 5 to 10 years, the next 10 to 15 years, what tangible things do you see in the dream world? In the dream world, right now, I think it's mainly just to try and get these two at a level that Hamutaloko, South Africa, and the first thing that they think, okay, I want to travel to Botswana. The first thing that comes to my, their mind is Orchid Luxury Boutique or Orchid Rosia. I want our places to be it's able to It's going to require sell. more rooms. Yes. Because um, right now, actually, in the pipelines, we're renovating. Uh, trying to open another guest house in Pakalani. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So things are in the pipeline. That's exciting. Yes. Things How are many in the rooms pipeline. will be the Pakalani one? It will also have five rooms. So 
because people baba nambata, especially South Africans, um, always say, I, we wish this place was bigger so that a lot of us can come this side. Mm. Um, but we're going there. We're, we're going there and, and we're getting it, there. Is um, it getting to a point where it will be run like, uh, like uh, Airbnb? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's where we, we ultimately want to... to, 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 Do you, to are you aware of the advantages of an Airbnb? Yes. Yes. What are they? <laughs> what, I mean, what, what do you, how will it be different? I'm still trying to work on that plan to make it more exciting or have a better selling point mm. with the, the, the places that are already there. Well, the guys who are running Airbnbs uh, tell me that the model is very simple. You yeah. take pictures, mm -hmm. you have a very good website, you have a very good presence on social media. Yeah. Then you post and boost, post and boost. Yes. And then people will come. Yeah. You don't think that model works? It it does. Hmm. It does. But also, like I'm saying, I'm trying to be a little more unique. So I'm working behind the scenes mm -hmm. to see, to come up with something that will be extra. Okay. Yes. So when can we expect the Pakalani Boutique to open? Ah, well, we're still very early in the renovation stage. This year, so. next year? Probably two two years. Oh, the renovation is that it's, slow. It's still that that slow. Because and man, I think we can get you a better builder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it takes two years. No, um, money wise, mm. things are a bit tough. Yeah. But we're trying to push. Probably by next end of next year, mm. we should see something. You should get a yeah. loan. Yes. Get a loan in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's that element of uh, staunch Adventists being petrified of debt. Yes. Um, is it something you're dealing with? Very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I well, don't like being in debt. But uh, isn't it you can borrow based... I think what works is that look at your, look at your balance sheet yes. and say to yourself, I'm not going to risk most of my balance sheet. Mm. Risk 10% yeah. to start. If your balance sheet, for argument's sake, is one million, mm. why don't you borrow hundred thousand? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And True. then, when it gets to two million, why don't you borrow two hundred thousand? Yes. Suggestion? Think, does I it think make sense? It does. I mm. think a lot of us were very risk averse mm. as Batwana, um, but I think I'm still learning the ins and outs of mm. of that as the of that area. So. Maybe you should come to my mentorship program on real estate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. available for you. Okay. But anyway, um, what did you say are your, were your biggest challenges or setbacks apart from your illness in getting the business of the ground, getting it to where it is? Um, just knowing the ins and outs of the market that we're, we wanted to penetrate. Mm -hmm. um, because like I'm saying, it's already very saturated market uh, your guest house um, and also trying to bring a different brand of B&B &B, mm. not just your okay mm. 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 room 250 no I wanted to set uh, the place apart mm. hence why the rooms are as they are we put a lot of money into setting the place up mm. getting furniture that is that will last um getting uh art uh, 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 art stuff that look inviting and are very intriguing and nice mm. so it's just but zwana haven't really understood that yet and that's what we're trying to but, but, but Tswana are not necessarily your target market. Yes. Mm. And it's okay. We always say that it's okay. Mm. Because you can't walk into a Lamborghini store mm. and come and say, no, Lamborghini is mm. Toyota is cheaper. Mm. Go to the Toyota dealership and mm. get yourself mm. a Toyota. Um, you so remind me of uh, saying that um, Lamborghini guys were asked once why they don't advertise on television. Yeah. And they said, you know, our market doesn't watch television. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm. So, it's it's just trying to find your ends of hitting your market, your target market, mm. and making sure that they get mm. uh, the advertisement that they need to get so that the place grows. 
Okay. Yeah. Isn't there a challenge associated with, um, with the costs and the requirements of, uh, of the regulator, of government? Yeah. But that, what would the highest money in Because we're on Booking.com. Mm. They get a lot more percentage of trying to put us out there. Mm -hmm. Because what sells for us is the ratings. If you go on Booking.com and look under Booking uh, Orchid Luxury Boutique, the ratings speak for themselves. And mm. I think that's the biggest selling point. Mm -hmm. A client's experience, word of mouth, is the best thing that will put you out there. Mm. Because most will look at, okay, these people have this rating. Malobo, we got a, uh, an award actually for Booking.com during the COVID time. Mm. We were still we in were it, not we? we? Yeah, we were we're rated, mm. we were rated 9.2. Out of? Out of 10. Mm. Wow. And we're still new. So mm. for us, that was like a really huge achievement for us. Mm. Um, and like I said, all our clients always feel like mm -hmm. Mola Bay. Mm. It's a home away from home. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on that award. Thank you. Um, there are some who might be watching don't know how, how that works, how booking.com and ratings work. How, how does one maneuver that, that terrain? Um, actually, all you just do is get on the, the, the website, mm -hmm. uh, booking.com, and they'll give you all the information that you need. Obviously, there's a percentage that there is a commission mm. for every booking what percent that you, they take? it depends mm -hmm. on what you want how much you they you want them to push for mm. us right now is 18 percent of every booking that mm -hmm. we get mm -hmm. so and they every time plenty. yeah every time somebody clicks accommodation in Khaburun, our our site our, our place it's is, optimized is the top top so they help you with it yes the, they help you with um, what um, internet optimization. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that that that's what's pushing us right now. Okay. So, but Mongoki Labota, why don't you go Airbnb because you don't pay yeah, as much? Yeah, I mentioned much. that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, okay, it 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 we will get there, but for me, for now, it was because Booking dot com is worldwide. I mean, Airbnb is also mm -hmm. worldwide, but. That's, that was the first uh, booking site I actually went on mm -hmm. before I okay. went for, 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 for Airbnb. Okay. Yes. All right. I mentioned government. Is there any way in which a government is assisting? Right now, no, because we're also playing training levy. Mm -hmm. They'll take our stuff for, for training. My stuff hasn't been taken for training yet, so I still have to... You have to, to, initiate, to, to initiate it, it yeah. and you have to talk to a trainer who's registered yes. with uh, BQA. Yeah. Um, and then that way you're able to claim back. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is the time of the show you get to ask me a question. Any question? As a business owner, mm -hmm. um, what are your key inspirations? inspirations or getting what motivates you or pushes you mm -hmm. to be where you are or what pushed you to be where you are um i think it was partly a desire to make a difference also in my personal life mm -hmm. and also to overcome a particular challenge i had mm -hmm. where there was a risk of me uh, losing my profession yeah. i talked about this before in previous shows mm -hmm. and then that, as a bonus, was the idea of giving back mm -hmm. and the idea of motivating others. Yeah. You know, we say we enthuse, we energize, we empower, and we inspire others. Yeah. So, so the idea is to, to be able to give back on a continual basis mm -hmm. where you benefit the ecosystem. So that is the biggest driver, yeah. where you are contributing and, and growing and giving back. Okay. Yeah. I hope I've answered that question. Yes, you okay, did. okay, yeah, all right. Did. Now, this is a time of the show where you get to speak directly to the viewer through that camera and to leave with them with something uplifting and inspirational. Oh, okay. Um, I think what I can say to you is 
whatever you put your mind to, let your passion drive you to do anything. I think before we run a rinyaza, tada, but now for me, the one thing that really drives me is the passion of loving people, loving God, and doing to others what I would like to be done to me. So, Oskarinyaza, you never know what tomorrow may bring with that small idea that you have. It may start with literally sewing uh, clothes for your baby. You never know. You, tomorrow you'll be the greatest fashion designer that there is in Botswana or in Africa. So your passion is what should drive you, every single thing that you do before money, though money is important, but passion should be the main thing that, that really pushes you to, to go for what you want. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, can you give them all your contact details, our location of your businesses and stuff? Okay. Um, Orchid Luxury Boutique Guest House is located in Block 8, um, Plot 34294. Uh, the number, landline, is 319-0840. And the guest, the, the spa, Orchid Luxury Spa, is located in Block 5, uh, Plot 40726. We also use the same landline number for our WhatsApp number. You can also contact Orchid Bakes on those numbers because it's also located in Block 8 at the guest house. And for me personally, if you want to get in touch with me, whether you want to get a job, I mean, we're still hiring at the spa. Mm. So um, you can ca contact me on 7296-5458. Or seven three nine three three four eight four, and on Facebook, my name is Lebo Lebo G. So, yes. What about Instagram and Instagram? Um, Lebo G, and all our pages have, uh, all our businesses have pages on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, Orchid Luxury Boutique Guest House. On, book, on Facebook and on Instagram, Orchid Luxury Spa on Facebook and on Instagram, and Orchid Bakes on Facebook and on Instagram. Lastly, can you tell them why they should watch Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast? I think Mr. Mohobe is doing a very great job in terms of enlightening people about what is currently happening in Botswana, motivating banana in doing what they love best and inspiring them to go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's really doing it. I think you're actually doing a great job. Yeah. Okay, yes. so they should subscribe. They should subscribe, mm. like, share, so mm. that more people can get inspired by all the nuggets people share come because it's different areas mm -hmm. of the sector so you never know who you may land who, to listen who you'll be listening to mm. and who knows tomorrow it will be you in this chair <laughs> thank you very much you've been a wonderful guest i really appreciate <laughs> thank you so what much. you had to share wonderful wonderful indeed <laughs>